Okay, everybody, Sunday, 9 p.m. Hope everyone's doing well. Let's see what we're looking at today. Oh, well, that's not working too well. So, um, today we are going to look at implementing uh, this dialog system for Godot 3. Um, will it be suitable? Will it work for our, our needs and purposes? That's what we're going to find out. Um, there's a couple of things we need to bear in mind here. Um, we can make and sell software using these files and code without crediting this dude and modify the files, but we can't release the code on the internet. We can't make videos or screenshots of the code and publish it online. Uh, so that's a biggie. We can't make videos or screenshots of the code and publish it online and make software using this open source and open sourcing make sure you know, no, do not include these systems right okay super so um i was just having a look at this as well just to see what else was included here um just having a little look at the news someone else said would it be okay if i release a text parser that returns json dialogue specifically for use with this system for those who don't want to use dialogue designer the renp like parser makes it quick to write scripts for this system and it contains no code from the add-on see that is the problem it contains so much code from the add-on uh yeah sure but only if you release it for free basic version the parser is here thank you very much so um i'm not sure what that's going to do to be honest run parser.py to export the script as a json file for use with good oh well that it's blooming amazing. So, what he's done there is he's written a script that converts this into a format um, that supports this. Anyway, that's not the point. We are here to uh, try and use the editor and make it usable for our author staff. So she's got a tool to create uh, dialogues. So um, we're going to follow these instructions. And we're going to see how we can transfer and make this work with our, our project. Um, let's close all this. OK, I'm getting quite a few icons on the screen here. Just playing with thumbnails. So we've got our documentation. Um, we've got our zoom settings correct. Yep, we're 150%. Let's jump into Godot. And uh, now where is it? Here it is, the dialog system. So, um, we are going to look at how we can basically scrap all this, but utilize this add-on here in our system so um not sure let's see what it says we're supposed to do transferring to another project in order to transfer the system to your own project you must do the following okay so let's just close this <coughs> open up a little browser here go to projects so dialog system 1.3 here we are uh Copy the message system to your project's add-on folders. Okay, so message system. All right, so we can just copy the add-ons folder. Go to Spodio, paste that in. Oh, if only it was uppercase. Right, and, well, it can be. I don't think it'll make any difference, right? All right, done. Okay, so we open our project now. Okay, so project. Oh, can we see everything there? Um, so, what's next? We get 20 meter extension lead. Uh, okay, so set up auto loads right now before I do all this. That's one thing I need to do. Uh, look at all these things we did recently. 
we had a lot of stuff. So I'm just gonna, oh wait, so these are all add-ons. So we wanna ignore the add-ons folder completely, right? Let me do that, so that. So we wanna ignore all these. Um, it'd have been easier if we just ignored the entire message system folder. I don't know if we had the option to do that from here, rather than just all this. But... Okay, so we're going to ignore these. Boom. All right, so yeah, that way we're not copying that into our repository, keeping that completely separate. Um, hopefully it never changes and breaks our game. These are the things we need to think about. So, okay, so we've basically added some, what on earth is all this? Looks like a, a load of files have basically had the uh, MD5 hashes changed. Is that source MD5, destination MD5? I'm not sure what's happened there. And we've basically turned on our narrative. Don't know if we need any of this. We can probably just ignore it, but you know, I don't want to break anything. So, um, <clears throat> so no, we don't need to do anything there. So we're going to go to project, project settings, uh, auto load. Okay. And set up, set them up like this. Okay, and then we're going to zoom in a little bit for you here. Oops. Oh. Okay. Try and set them up like this. How's that? Completely lost my Godot. Box. Looks like it's gone. Project settings. There we go. Okay. So, so we're going to add a new one called message. Is that right? Name. Yeah. Message. And we're going to add. Uh, oops. Okay. Need to find it. So it's add-ons, message system, and message parser. There we go. Add. Ooh. It's just supposed to be message, right? Message. Okay. Next one. Message options. Okay. Node name. Message options. Super. Add. Next one, bubble. So I'm a little bit concerned about how this one's going to work, but okay. Message bubble, add, and message box. Add. All right. Now we need to go to project settings input map and add a new input dialog next. This is the button that lets you continue the dialogue. Okay. I mean, it's a button, right? In my case. Why, need, why do I need an input for that? <clears throat> it's a bit weird. Why should that be connected to... Also, I don't want a camera either. I haven't got a camera. Okay. So, okay, well, for now, we'll use, uh, okay, I'm just going to do what it says at the moment, and we'll see if we need to change it. Dialogue next. Add. Dialogue next will be left click. All right. Okay, super. Um. Close. Open message parser.gd and find on ready var camera level root get node camera 2D and change the value to a path point to your main camera. So 
I'm afraid at this point I can't show you the code due to um, us not being allowed to show you this code on screen. So all I'm going to do is um, I'm going to just switch to uh, this screen here. Woo. I'm going to open up. Um, I'm going to open up. Um, message parser gd um, looks like you can see it again I'm not sure why go for this one here there we go oh right so we're going to open up message parser gd where is it message parser gd Scripts. There we go. All right. And I found the camera. So we need to uh, change the value to a path pointing to your main camera. And turn it off by commenting out lines of code calling slide camera 2 and return camera. Okay, we want to turn it off. So let's comment that out for any other references to camera. Uh, slide camera two. So, okay, so we're gonna replace. Oh my goodness. Okay. Just look for all references to camera. Obviously don't need to return camera. Never gonna use that function anymore. Just uh, comment all that out. So I'm basically finding anything with the word camera in and commenting it out. Done. All right, super. Let's share my screen again and close the code quick before anyone sees it. There we go. All right. Oh, I really need to work on that transition. It's a little bit janky. Not sure what the problem is. It seems to be faster sometimes and then slower at others. So, um, right. So next step. Where's our document? Okay. So step two. So we've done this. When using message bubble, I don't need, need to use message bubble, change overall scale to match your game's zoom level. The bubble might show up out of camera's view if the value is too high or too low. One, this system is not an actual Godot add-on. You don't need to enable it in the add-ons tab. Okay. Right. So... We've basically got we, we've got these scenes now that we can utilize in our game, which is pretty cool. So let's go to our user interface. All right. So message box and message bubble. I think we're going to have to have a look at this uh, other project first. So we're going to quit back to the project list. Back to the dialogue system demo. And let's see where these boxes and things are being used. So, um, do, 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 where are they? I don't know where they're being used. Um, <clears throat> Certainly won't be fireworks, will it? Just play it a sec. Let's make sure it's still working, okay? Talk to Jane. Hi. So that's a message bubble, right? We don't want to use that. We want something more like that. Okay. Ah, because if we open up the editor here, Dialog Designer, 
And of course, that's what it's all about right now is basically, so this is one we designed earlier. When you create this, you can create a bubble or a box. So we want ours to be boxes, right? Don't want bubbles. Oh, no, 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 no. There we go. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. <clears throat> so message box is a classic box message. Message bubble is a floating message, which we're not going to use. Message options are our decision buttons. And message passes the main script, C7. Ooh. Nine patch wrecked. Change this to an image. Okay. Label shows text on the screen. Sound effects. Sound effects on the dialog showing up. Characters timer. Sound effects timer. Okay. All right. So, um, where are we? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, I don't see it used anywhere here, but maybe it's getting added dynamically. I'm not sure. doesn't really tell us what we want to do. And what I don't want to do is uh, accidentally show you code I shouldn't be showing you. So I'm going to quit back. Project, project list, okay. Go back into Fodio. And we'll just try adding one of these and see what happens. So add-ons, message system, message box. Boom, here it is. All right. Mm -hmm. Does make me think um, <clears throat> about how we are going to implement all this. Um, okay, well, that's very good. We have a box there. Okay, transferring to another project. Okay, creating important dialogues, how the demo works. And down the buttons to connect to each character by function. I did reach out to Radmat and offer him the option of uh, joining us today to show us a little bit about how we could use this. I've not heard anything back. Um, okay, so <clears throat> otherwise you can write the files by hand. Nice. Okay. Um, what I'm looking for here is like, where's the starting point? What's, what do I need to just kickstart this? When using message bubble, when using, okay, but I want to, ah, right, here we go. Start dialog. JSON path, interacted object equals null, culture from outside script, JSON path, path to dialog file, interacted object, object with which the player interacted to start the dialog. Used when the character value in show message node is set to interacted character. <coughs> Used when the character value in show message node is set to interactive character. Okay, so in our case, um, there's always going to be an interactive character, right? Oh, and then it's like, what object did you interact with? Hmm. Okay. Maybe we need to uh, try just copying some of the elements from the other project and just feeding them in here to try it out. So here we go. Let's do that now. Uh, we're going to start up Godot as a second project. Open up the dialog system. And... 
Have a look at some of these players. There we go. Start dialogue interaction script. So we'll just take we'll just take that. Ah, look at that. String file var adjacent dialogue file. So if we look at if we look at one of these then. Um there we go. You see all the scripts referenced here. So we just drag one in. Handy. So <coughs> we haven't created any character objects yet. Maybe it's time. Um, pretty cool. <laughs> all right. Well, you know what? I'll just take that and we'll create a uh, create a new character object. <coughs> um, do, 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 do. Where do we? Where am I? Scripts. Um, okay, I think we made a decision that we would do it like this, right? The same way we've done everything else. So we're going to make a, a node. Um, just a node. Okay, did that work? No? Okay, let's go here. Ah, wait a minute. I've added just an empty node here. Okay, there we go. Uh, other node is node and create a script. We'll rename this character, create a script for it, call that character.gd, stick that in our scripts folder. Character.gd, okay, create. Extends node, paste in this code. <coughs> Doesn't extend sprite, might have a texture called face, might have a color, might have a voice pitch, might have an interaction script, probably will and a function called talk, great. Okay, so now uh, save that as character scene. So now we've got characters. Um, <clears throat> still not sure how this will work yet. Characters, um, we want them to be able to move around. So I don't know how that'll work <laughs> and whether they'll like, like move location stuff, but potentially the first place they appear is here, so we're going to add a character to our living area, and we'll call it character underscore AI. It's our first character. Hey. Um, so let's have a look at our character properties over here. So we've got script variable. We've got face, color, voice, pitch, and interaction script. So let's get a dialog from here, from the uh, message system. Oh, we don't have it yet. Okay. In that case, it's time to create a new folder called Dialogues and bring in the dialogue that we created earlier. Maybe. Actually, you know what? That's maybe way too much. Let's create a really simple uh, dialogue. So we'll create a new one. Okay. Uh, add a file. We'll just say character for now. Player, dialogue text. Hello. I mean, <clears throat> it's an AI, right? So, <clears throat> good morning, Jove. There we go. No sliding of the camera. Uh, and attach it to our start script. There we go. Happy days. So we're going to call this uh, AI. I would just call it good morning. Export. Export it to that crazy path again. And we need to change that at some point. Open folder, say good morning, and move that into our dialogues folder. And now we have a script for, as soon as it finds it. <coughs> can I just do that? Yeah, I can, there we go. Right, we have a script. Oh, okay. So now we've got to have this character talk. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. So why don't we make it part of one of these object interactions? Let's make it, um, you know what? I can't bear my script for the XCOM magazine. So 
Let's have a look at our script for that. Um, so we've got game script. And when we interact with the uh, XCOM magazine, we will have So we've got a link to, we've got to try and create a link to a character. So we should do it to do this here, right? Var AI equals get node. So player is there. Character AI is there. So that's going to be a living area forward slash character AI. Just check that works. Oh dear. What's this? G isn't declared in the current scope. Message parser. You might want to change this in your game. G? G. There we go. The G in that jubilee is the autoloader script containing the variable player name. You can change it in your own script's name or script path. Okay. I see. Okay, so we're just going to hide the screen again. Be right back. Oh, too early. And I'm going to go into Godot. We're going to find all references to G. Um. <clears throat> I'm going to create a new player name variable. <coughs> I'll call him Jove. And did it say it's a it's an auto load? I think it did, didn't it? G. The auto script containing the variable player name. You can change it to your own script's name or a script path. <clears throat> we have got a global maybe we just stick it in there for now so G becomes global um, I mean we're not really using global much at the moment so I think we could just go into the auto load um, I can show this my goodness, that's so bad. What has happened? It's like my transition has got uh, running at half the speed. In fact, maybe I'll just turn off my transition for now. Let's turn off my transition. Go. Let's double check that. Hey, hey, hey. There we go. Right. Um, we're going to add a new auto load no we're not we're just going to change global to be g pretty handy all right and then we're going to do a project wide search in all files for the word global find <coughs> found a few so we change that to g Uh, change that to G. Okay, super. Here, G. G. 
that it? And play narrative. G. G. One more. G. Okay. So that should be that. Let's try running that again. And we've got another error, this time in my exit. Ah, okay. So it's basically saying, hang on, what the hell is a character? I don't know what a character is because all our scripts have um, something called instance name, right? So this one's character. Let's just double check what our object is. Yeah, so it's just gonna be lowercase. There we go. Should work again. We should be up and running. My mouth was dry. All right. Left the heating on. Excellent. Our user interface still contains uh, our. Doesn't it? No. Where did we add our? Um, Oh, there it is. Right, okay. So you can't see it at the moment, which is interesting. Which is good. <clears throat> so, we now want to interact with um, the magazine. Magazine, here it is. Okay, so we're going to put in something here. Um, so, can I just use the talk box then? to show something here. Switch back to the other project. Start dialogue, blah, 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 blah. So that's for a character. Talk. And then pass in an interactive script. So that is what we're going to do. Blimey, that's really powerful. So you can create these massive, massive scripts and then just pop them in a player and that's it. You can use that for the entire game um, depending on the different states that exist. It's actually pretty damn cool. I like it. What's that? Loaded in one group, okay. Uh, okay, so we need to make our character talk. So did we get a reference to, to the AI? I think we did. So need you to talk, AI. Hey, talk. Cool. Now we have met, we have selected a, uh, a script, so that should just work, right? I woke up. My mouth was dry. I think I left. When I was a kid, I wanted nope. to visit Earth. But after the death of my father, I wasn't interested in going home. Home was Europa. My path was to continue my parents' journey okay, so, in the field of science. Oh, I hate that line. So, gee, can talk is false. You might want to change this in your game. Uh, Non-existent function can talk in base node global. Right, okay. So, <clears throat> that's a bit weird. Um, let's go have a look at the other one again. So, player. Sam. Okay, let's have a look at the auto load here. That's G, game GD. Okay, here we go. So essentially we're gonna need a few of these in our global, right? To get this working. So we've got the player name up there. Let's get rid of this stuff. Don't need that. Um, we don't need these, but they're useful. So that's just showing you variables that you might, might want. Um, so we might wanna have something like talk to AI and then we can say that's true do we need win uh, function player return message level root get node main player not sure what that's going to do and I'm not sure what it's supposed to do either so let's go back to our dialogue system here after using a getter, i.e. at g.playername, always adds an additional space. This is needed because a function searches for the end of the function's name. We're trying to find a space at the end. The text will look normal in the game. 
FE. So after using a getter, FE at G dot player name. So F dot E. The symbol for Elementaron. Say is it I E, but the F is nowhere near the I. Hmm. Um, okay. So let's look at this. So getting a game variable, getting a local variable, causing text. In the demo, the buttons are going to each character by a function that calls a character based on the variable talk to. The character has a function called talk, which starts a dialogue. In a game, you obviously want to use wouldn't want to use buttons, but run a dialogue won't enter it with the player instead. Correct. Okay. So we don't need these buttons. We don't need this can talk, right? Um, so... Okay, so I think I just don't need that, right? So we'll run again. I woke up. My mouth was dry. I think I left the heating on. When I was a kid, I wanted to oh. visit Earth. But after the death of my father, I wasn't interested in going home. Home was Europa. My path was to continue my parents' so, journey in the field of science. Show message. If this speaker type equals zero, current speaker equals level root, Get node main, get node this character, zero. <coughs> now, we've got some problems. The real problem here I'm starting to see is that we've got it. We're not extending the functions that have cre been created here. We're editing them, um, which means that if this were to be updated, which it probably will be, we're going to go through and make all these changes again, understand the changes that have been made to the system, um, and re-edit. So... <coughs> wondering how much else I need to change here. Uh, I'm going to have a look at the code here, so I'll be right back when I'm looking at the code. Scrolling down. Mm, so, from what I understand, it's just kind of linking to who's talking right now. So, I don't think I need... Um, much of that. I'm just going to look for this current speaker variable. See where else it's referenced. Okay, so basically it's it's referenced uh, in relation to um, the camera. Again, these are camera functions. So... We really don't need to worry about any of this. I'm going to leave it an interacted character. Because I think interacted character is something we pass in through the script. Um, so, switching back. Coming back to the scene. Here we go again. So, we're going to give it another shot. I woke up. My mouth was dry. I think I left the heating on. The when I was a kid, oh. I wanted to visit Earth. Now but after the death of my father, I wasn't interested in going home. Home was Europa. Okay, so now... My path was to continue my parents' journey in the field of science. It wants to have a face. See, we didn't want to have faces in this, per se. Um... But... 
we have created an AI and the AI has got a face variable. So we've got to create this connection between our character nodes and our objects somehow. So again, I've got to hide the screen again. Oh, this is a shame, isn't it? Because how can we do any tutorials without showing you the code? Oh my goodness. This is such a shame. Okay. Um... So I've messaged current to get a speaker. So current speaker, again, we don't have a current speaker. So I'm just going to comment that out. Bring these back. Current speaker again. Color. Don't have a color. Voice pitch. We do. Okay. Uh, I need to reference current speaker. How do I do it? And how do I do it whilst not showing you anything? I've got my countdown on. Let's turn that off. Do not need the countdown on. Current speaker. Now, current speaker should be self. It should be whoever started talking. So self should work. So let's go back into our parser. Current speaker. Um, Somehow I need a reference to interacted character. Yes, I'm doing in my function, I am calling uh, message start dialogue. And um, without showing too much, in fact, I won't show it, I'll just show this, this again. If we look for talk, right? Each character is a function called talk, which starts the dialogue assigned to them. Okay. You need to add more values into the dialogue. What you need to do is get current speaker and then the value. The player also has values that get access in the dialogue money and mood appeal. Money and mood. So. do need to allow this sort of code to come back in. I'm going to have to hide the code again because we're looking at this. Okay, so we do need we do need to pass in this ver this current speaker value. If we don't, then we don't have a reference to the character. But rather than passing a, a reference to itself in, it's trying to find it's passing an array and looking for the node, but it doesn't know where to find the character. So I'm gonna have to just run this again. I woke up. My mouth was dry. The reason I'm running it again is because it's going when to crash again kid, at this I point. To visit Earth. 
But after the death of my father, I wasn't interested in going home. Home was Europa. My path was to continue my parents' journey in the field of science. Okay, so there is this little bit. I don't I think Matt will mind me showing this tiny little bit here because this is kind of key to something you need to do here. I hope so, anyway. Well, so now we need to get a reference to our character AI up here. Um, at the moment, it's just looking for a node called main, which has all the characters under. But that's not going to work for us because our character could be anywhere. It could be moving around, could be in a different place. Um, there's a function here called get node by name. What's this dot character to zero mean? Let's have a look at the what we've got down here. Um, this, here we go, dictionary, character zero so in here we've got the word player so it's looking for a character called player which is wrong uh, that's the scripts fault right that's our scripts fault because in our script we've called the player player so I'm gonna go into characters I'm gonna add AI in fact we'll call it character because that's the way we've done it, right? AI plus. Go in here, change that. Re export the script. Go into our dialogues. Uh, we're going to copy the script back into that folder. So, open folder, morning. Paste it back into our dialog. Overwrite this, yes. Super. Okay, now. Um, at least the name of the file is getting called should be correct. So what we're seeing in here of player will at least be correct. However, there is no node called main. So it really should be passing in a reference to the object. Um, which it kind of does with the talk command, it just kind of loses it for some reason in this. I know this isn't easy. So, do, 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 do. let's try this. Don't know if it'll work. It'd be cool if it does. Never used that function before. Oh, I've never even heard of it. Maybe it's his. My mouth was dry. When I was a kid, nope. I wanted to visit Earth. But after so, the death of my father, I wasn't interested in going oh, home. Could, home was your no, clearly it didn't my work. My path was to continue my parents' journey in the field of science. Yeah. So, it does seem to have got past that point. But I don't think it's actually found the object. Um, what I'd like to do is hide the screen again. And we're going to going to go into the message parser. We're going to find this line again. Um, okay, here we go. We found this line again. We're going to put a break point here, so we're going to see what whether we actually got a node here or not. Oh, I woke up. one more thing. I am hiding the narration. So we're going to go into global. We're going to set our narrative to false so we don't have to listen to my voice. Yay! Get enough of it with me talking on the stream. Okay, so breakpoint, hit. We look at this. We look at character. Character AI. Brilliant. Okay, so if I step over one, Let's see what current speak is set to. Has it got a node? Has it got a node? Current speaker. There it is. No. 
So that's not good. That's not good at all. We need a, a bit of code here. It says a current speaker equals null. Um, don't need the brackets. Print. Couldn't find. Uh, couldn't find the character node. This does not bode well. I'm having to rewrite this code, to be honest. Um, I've got a sinking feeling that I'm going to have to write my own parser, to be honest. Um, but for the purposes of this stream, and this episode, it's worth taking a look and seeing how this is done. Because it could help other people, I think. So, that didn't work. So what we'll actually do then is go back to the original line, just get an actual reference to it just to make sure it works. Because not everyone's going to be uh, having characters moving around the game within the node tree, are they? So, um, in fact, I mean, it, you know what? Why don't I just add a... Um, if I, um, let's have a look at player. So in player we have the current location, previous location. So let's go into character, add the same thing, right? So now we can have them in some main group if we want, but I'll just have it there to be honest. Um, and now we can go back in here and we don't need main level root. Must be game. Uh, let's try that. What have I got? what have I done wrong? comma or close bracket oh yeah there we go all right super here we go again all right I attempted to call function talk of a null instance all right super so now um of course we need to update our own so let's fix that and again Okay, now what? Oh, it's our breakpoint. Let's just step over and see if we got it. Non-existent function, get node. All right, okay. Can we use that now? find the character node for and then let's add in that super deeper just want to double check it's getting passed in there correctly again if we make the make the next change wow did it work no it's not there yet What's going on? Know what's going on there? Super. Couldn't find the character node for character underscore AI. Super. Okay, so we'll just use a standard uh standard methods for getting it. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, let's have a look at some of our 
Yeah, we'll just do. Uh, we'll just use this get tree command. We used it before, right? Seems to do the job. That's the one. So. Do, 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 do. How can that fail? Yeah. And we'll just put the put the breakpoint there. See if it gets there. Okay. Off we go. Come on, come on. Breakpoint. Output. Looks like we found it. Let us continue. Oh. That's where it disappeared to last time. Turn it off the breakpoint. Here we go. Good morning, Jove. Invalid visible on base null instance with type bool. Uh, say what? Can talk. Global. I don't think we're still using that. Just search the entire uh, project for can talk. And it's commented out here, but it's still commented in here. So, yep. There we go. Close that. Close that. And here we go again. All right. So we have successfully implemented um, at least in some means that we are, what we haven't done yet is got buttons and options working, but uh, step one is just getting that getting it to work inside the game. Um, I don't think we need this, but it's still it's nice to see that example, so I'll keep that in. Um, happy days. So now what I, what I was thinking actually is that it would be useful to ditch the message box altogether because we've got our box here. Yeah. So we probably want to put make this our message box with the character name at the top. Um, just change the way that, that connects. So let's have a look at our message box um, scene. If I can find it. Message system, message box scene, 2D. Here we go. Right, so what have we got here? We've got this rectangle. We've got... Another rectangle, another rectangle, a label, a name, the face goes there, okay. Character timers, two timers, sound effects player, and another label. So, what's this? Parallax background, cool. I don't know why that works. Interesting that it's been done like that. So ultimately, if, as long as we make sure that we bring elements that exist um, into ours, then maybe we can get it working. This is interesting. Let's have a quick look at this. I wonder what font is being used. Mono. The name of the font. Yep. Got some styles, none. Some colors, none. This is a test. I like the fact you can do color text. Um, how do we do stuff like that in here? That would be the BB code, right? Let's have a look at our. Um, okay, so it's time to up the ante. Do a little bit more here. Um, 
documentation up. Bold, italics, underlined, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So, um, so this will be a good morning. Jove, oop. Some sort of autocomplete on here. Good morning, Jove. Make Jove the different color. Um, I trust you slept well. All right, cool. So we've added that in. Then we're going to add a choice. That choice is like a baby. And terrible. And then we're going to again. Character AI, box. So this one's so sorry to hear that. I mean, that should be this one here. Oops. And then one more. Box, character, character AI. Good to hear it. Okay, so get that one up. Export, go back to our dialogues, move good morning. Oops, whoa, whoa. Copy that over our one here. And let's see what happens. Now we don't have any buttons, so I'm not sure what will happen here. Options have not been added yet, but we can add them. Let's add our options in. There we go up here uh, next to the message box okay can't see anything on the screen okay so um should just work right because we just re-imported it so All right, now it won't let me continue. Oh, here we go. Ha <laughs> uh, ha! Like a baby. Good to hear it. Oh, jolly good. Well, you know what? <clears throat> I think it's simple enough that we can we can work with this. So uh, we've got something basic in there. So the next step will be. Um, so we've created a character object. So we're going to have to develop out the character object. Let's go back into our into our document here. Um, where are we? Okay. All right. So we've implemented a basic, well, we've implemented a dialogue, what's it called again? Dialogue designer, yeah, okay. So we've done a basic version of that, but we need to improve that. So link box to our own box. Link message options to our own options. We could do all this later. We still don't know what our UI is going to be like at the moment, so we're just throwing stuff in there. Um, and then I want to talk to and have a, a look at designing this UI to look good. Um, from there, we can start really making it more powerful. So I'm going to do those two options, so that'll be good. Um, what else do we want to do? We will need to uh, test local variables. Test um, different characters talking, and then we 
want to enable characters to move, enable characters to make sounds, we need to implement a system for audio files. So that's going to be fun. So essentially we need to change this parser to allow us to play an audio file um, when it plays that sound. So, and that has got to tie into our existing audio system. So we really need to, um, needs to connect to our own audio player. That's a good question, how we do that. Um, because at the moment, uh, we haven't created anything really to look at. Like, oh, we need some sort of cue um, for our audio. So we press a button, it stops the current sound, plays the next sound and so on. We need just, again, I've said it before, we need to control uh, add control aspects to it all. Um, what else do we need to do? That's pretty good. So before we commit any of this, um, there's a couple of things I want to do. I want to change this so it says Jove, right? And uh, yeah, this is a test. It's fine. Save that. We want to add a character button in here as part of our GUI update, right? And then we want that to be the interaction with the character. So let us do that real quick because I think that's pretty straightforward. 10 minutes over at the moment and uh, let's have a look. We get some big stats with the, thanks to this. So thanks, Matt. Looks pretty cool. Quite happy at the moment. Wasn't sure at first, but now quite convinced it's going to be useful. Let's close that. Uh, okay, so where do we update this, the GUI? Is it global? No, it's game. Display exits. So we want to do a func display characters. Right? So this displays a list of characters at the current location. So, this is interesting. Um, you know what I might do? Let's create a new node. Bring it up here. We'll call it characters. Now I can just call this AI. Bring it in here, All right? So it's no longer in here, but the AI has a current location, which is living area, All right? So that's where it starts off. So we're separating this out from all the other stuff. I might move the, that's fine. Let's leave it up there. Okay, so the AI is in the living area. So what we need to do is that part of our display characters, we need to loop through all the characters and throw them out. Uh, we also need to fix something in the parser real quick because it's going to crash again because it can't find the node, right? Um, let's put a pass in here. So, oops. So we're going to do this again. It's going to crash. Can't find the node again. AI talk on null instance. So the node is now characters AI, right? Super. And now it's gonna crash one more time. So that won't be able to find the character again. This will be in the parser. Oh, that's right. Oops, it's still got an AI in there. There we go. And there 
it is. Can't find the current speaker. Uh, that's not the one we want. It's the... Um, couldn't find the character node for character AI. Couldn't find the character node. Oh, the script. The script needs updating. Director, it just becomes... Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, no, that's... A bit of a pain, isn't it? Jeez. Oh no. That would be, thank goodness it's not a big script. You need to add in an editing option for, for your characters. I mean, if I do this, I can't edit that either. It's no good. Easy fix, guys. Easy fix, Matt. Right, so... AI, 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 export, exported, copy that, paste it into our game dialog, replace, close it. Oops, I did not mean to close it there. Um, so, parser. Find the character. There it is. So, um, so that's going to be uh, let's have a look at our game node. So it's going to be characters forward slash. I think that should be it. Put a note break there. Play it again. Seems alright. Oh, wait. No, if it got here, it couldn't find it. Uh... to change the name in here. No. What's the output say? Step over it. Couldn't find the character node for AI, okay. So that's not working. Get current scene. Get node. If I go in here, just to get node, note, get node, do not come up and help you. No, I'm sure I've had it come up before, is it's dollar. GD script tokenizer. There we go. Right, so we want a uh, dollar character AI. So, oh, maybe it's just no forward slash then. Let's give it the forward slash. go so we now have characters in there it's a little bit neater three so we put a face in there stick a little face in um, default icon show that out yay Excellent, okay. And so what we want to do is update this display characters. So now we can loop through the characters um, section. So I'm just gonna get my my path there. 
close that. And we want to loop, loop through all the characters here. Um, so <clears throat> how do we add these to a group? Is that possible? Okay, we just want to get uh, no children, don't we? I wonder if we do that anywhere else. Yep, there we go. So we're doing that there. So, clear out current characters. Right, and then add characters in current, in players current location so for exit in um, did I just save this for goodness sake we are in the game script after all so I can actually use this right Can do that all right let's just print out all the, all the names and display characters and then display characters it's going to be a function that we use when we update the GUI right and then of course we're going to have to create buttons okay so down here So, um, <clears throat> display characters. Oh, there we go. That's just work straight away. AI, there we go. Okay, so now, um, we're going to create an array. Called local characters, and if we find a character in there, we are going to if I could spell characters dot append, and we're going to add uh, a link to that object. Can we do that? All right. And then we're gonna here, we're gonna print this array out. And we're not gonna print that anymore. Is that gonna work? Non existent function appends because we're not declared it as a character. I mean, as an array. Let's try again. Super. So it's found a node. So that's now linked to our AI node, right? Now we only wanna do that if the current location so uh, let's print the current location so that's player dot and we've got a we've got a means of doing this right um and now what we probably need to do is do something similar to what the player does so if we look at our player object we've got all these I mean, a character's a bit like a player, eh? I should probably be extending it, but... I have no idea how we extend a secondary... I guess presumably this would be extends... A player would extend character. I'll have to look at doing that. Um, let's stick it on our to-do list. So... Extend... Player... No, extend character. GD to 
create a player script. We want to minimize duplication of things like this. Um, okay, so now we should be able to use these functions, get current location node, to get this information. So, this is just the name, and that's what we want. So, in our game, we're going to print out players' current location. Are we still getting player at the top here? No. Game doesn't seem to have an exit. It's just dollar player. Dollar, capital P. Okay. So, should now print out living area. Yep. Super. And... We should also be able to print out our character's current location, right? Using this script. Both in the living area. So now we can compare those two values. So if the player's current location equals character's current location, oops. That mean, what does that mean? It means they're in the same room. So we want to show them. So we're going to add it to the list here. Could be more than one, right? So now we have got this database of this uh, array of objects, the players in the room. So and we want to create buttons out of those, right? So um, we're going to remove any old buttons. here actually so characters and then we're doing exactly the same thing right so we'll just copy all this okay and character buttons now much the GUI now we're looking through local characters so character in local characters and um don't care about that uh if character dot yeah character dot visible so definitely want characters to be able to be invisible right um have we done that with objects? Have we exported that? Yeah. Let's just do that the same way. Okay. Super. Um. So game. So if, if you can't see it, don't show it. Um, don't need a target location per se. So we're going to create a new button. We're going to add that button to a group of characters. Uh, the button text is going to be the name of the character. So it's character dot name. And then we're going to connect this button to... Let's just make sure we're connecting to this right bit. So this is, I think it's going to be characters. Probably. So I'm not going to connect it to anything just yet. Let's see if that works. We should have an AI character. We do indeed. Can't interact with them yet. Okay. So. Um... We do that. No. Uh, 
if an exit isn't declared, yeah, so we're going to pass in character. Okay, so yeah. So, um, yeah. Oh, print. It worked. It worked. Fabulous. Okay, so we've connected a button up to that character. So now, uh, in a similar method to this, we, we call a method in our game script, right? Um, so I'm going to copy all this because it's similar, but different. So we don't care whether they're allowed to take the exit. There's no pre functions here. Uh, you know what? We're better off looking at the object scripts here rather than the exits. So this is exits, characters, and this is items. So it's more like this one here. We use this. So there's no name. Ah. Could have an interaction with or you probably wouldn't want an interaction with the character though right character is a lot like a an object in many ways you might want to fight with them Maybe we should build the the character object like an object. So our object has verbs, right? Maybe our character should have the same thing. Right? Um oh, blimey. Okay, you know what? I'm not going to do that yet. We're just going to get this working. Um, but then we're going to make that one of our goals. So, uh, make character like an object. Interact using verbs. The talk verb will um, start a dialogue. And the talk verb could start a dialogue. I mean, the fight verb could start a dialogue. How about you? So uh, let's just get rid of that for now. Oh, that's object. So basically, on button, character button up. So we're pressing the button and character. So we're going to modify this to do modify to allow verbs to be passed in so we can interact with it in a better way um, no object name no need to, oh yeah we do want to do this so um, we'll call this character funk name equals character uh, character dot name to lower so our function is going to be um, we'll call it interact with this character, right? Underscore. That's going to be our function name. If we find this function, then call it um, 
because we're going to do it very simple for now. We don't have any option that's pressed. We don't have any object that's passed in. Uh, we just have a current a character function name. And if we don't find it, then we're going to say couldn't find this function. There is no verb yet. So again, oops. Couldn't find it. Um, so we'll take this out for now. Right. So now when we interact with that character, we are going to call a method in here. So we've now got exit scripts, object scripts, and we're going to create our first character script. Very, very simple. All we're going to do is start a dialogue. So just build this up. Character. Uh, don't need that. Okay, and our function for this is super simple. It was interact with the character name AI. Right, and uh, did we need to pass something in? Not sure we did. I think we might have. Um, doesn't matter anyway, we don't need it. So at the moment, we've been using this verb down here, ai.talk. So we can bring this up to our new script here. Delete that. Right, there we go. So we should be able to just talk to the AI now. Um, whether it'll work or not, I'm not sure. You never know. Oh my goodness. There we go. Like a baby. There we go. We are talking to our living area AI. Oh, whoa. I wasn't sure if we'd managed to implement this entire um, script in so long. So, so just to recap then, um, what we've looked at there is the dialogue designer and how we can implement uh, conversations. That's what we've just implemented, a conversation with our AI. Um, and what we want to do um, is try this one. It's a little bit more complicated. And uh, we'll try this tomorrow. Um, so we've set some goals for tomorrow in expanding and improving how we work with this dialogue designer. Uh, we want to allow characters to be able to move between locations. That's AI characters, not us, not the player. Um, and we want those characters to be able to do things at those locations. So they may walk around, eat a bit of grass. We could have a little deer AI, for example. Talk to the deer, shoot the deer. Um, it exists, but just in the audio world. So that's great. Let's commit our changes today. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So we implemented uh, the um, dialogue designer Godot script. Uh, we introduced the character object. I still can't spell character. Character object. Um, we um, added character buttons um, and connected characters to dialogue scripts. Oh, I think that's a major, major step we've made there. Thanks to Matt's uh, dialogue designer, we can really do some powerful stuff very quickly. Um, so that's basically taken us about an hour to implement his system. It does require some changes, uh, which is a bit of a pain because if it does change and we want to bring those improvements in, then we're going to have to rechange it again. Uh, so actually in hindsight, what I should have done is committed his original code into my repository, privately of course, uh, and then implemented the changes so I could see how I'd changed it pri prior to that. Um, so what I might do, I know I, I ignored the code here in my repository. I'll, uh, I'll unignore, I'll take the code out, put the original code back in, commit it, then take the updated code, the changes we made today and recommit it. 
Um, so I'm going to put a little note in there that I'll put it right at the top as well. We want to uh, import dialog designer scripts into repository as well as the changes. Super. Okay, guys, well, I hope that was useful. And um, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow at 9 p.m. BST. Today was the 20th episode, so that's 20 days nonstop every night. Um, I have to say, some nights I am just really not up for it. Um, but somehow I've been managing to just get up and get on with it. But I might need to take a little break at some point. We'll see. See if I can last the year. That's the plan at the moment. Um, I've also got to move house once this lockdown's finished, so, um, but I'm planning to make sure that any move will interfere as little as possible with the streaming and the continued development, so I'm trying to take it in stages. So thanks again, guys. Have a good Sunday night, um, and hopefully tune in tomorrow. I can make your Monday a little more painless. All right. Cheers. Bye.